Hi everyone, this lesson is on perianal skin tags. So perianal skin tags are something that patients may have, they may overlook, but they can indicate a potential underlying condition that can be important to recognize. So if you have things like this near the anal opening, these would be perianal skin tags. So this loose piece of stretchy skin, that would be a perianal skin tag. So if you have one of these perianal skin tags, you may have one of the three underlying conditions we're going to discuss in this lesson. So this lesson is going to be very important for anyone who has any of these perianal skin tags. Before we talk about those three different conditions, let's talk about perianal skin tags. So they're also known as sentinel skin tags. They're a dermatological finding indicating an underlying perianal disease process. So those are going to be the conditions we're going to discuss in this lesson. So they're going to occur as a loose piece of skin that kind of hangs from the area around the anus. They're going to be painless and they're going to be visible. So they're going to be exterior to the anal canal. So these are some findings that patients themselves could find. And if they do find them, this could be an indication that you have one of the three conditions we're going to discuss here in the next upcoming slides. The first condition we're going to discuss is anal fissures. So anal fissures are superficial anal skin tears. So it's like you'd have your skin being torn open. Now these anal fissures are going to occur distal to the dentate line. You don't have to worry about all the terms here, but if we were to look inside the anal canal, there's a particular line called the dentate line and the anal fissures are going to occur distally to this. So they're going to occur closer to the opening as opposed to internally. So they're going to occur distal to the dentate line. Now these anal fissures can occur at any age, but they're gonna be most common in pediatric patients and in middle age patients. And they are relatively common. Many patients can have these. They may not present to clinicians, but they can experience them. Now, what are some of the signs and symptoms of anal fissures? One of the hallmark findings of anal fissures is anal pain, especially during defecation and afterwards. So it's going to be a sharp and sometimes burning pain during defecation. That's going to be a key finding in anal fissures. We can also see some bleeding occurring. Oftentimes it is going to be bleeding after. So once you've wiped with toilet paper or after defecation in the toilet bowl, you can see a little bit of blood. Constipation can also be another finding with anal fissures. So the, the constipation is not going to be due to the anal fissures themselves, but because anal fissures cause so much pain during defecation, patients can avoid using the washroom. So they start to become constipated. They have issues with bowel habits or they have bowel habit changes. And then they can also have perianal skin tags. Now, perianal skin tags in anal fissures are going to occur with chronic anal fissures. So if you've just started to have anal fissures, or if you've just started to have anal pain during defecation, that might be a new onset of an anal fissure. It's unlikely you're going to have perianal skin tags. These skin tags in anal fissures are going to occur if you've had this disease for a long period of time. Now, the second condition that could be causing perianal skin tags is hemorrhoidal disease. So we first have to talk about what hemorrhoids are. Hemorrhoids are vascular cushions or tissues that aid in fecal continence. Hemorrhoids themselves are normal. People have hemorrhoids, but it's when they cause disease. We'll discuss that here in a moment. So hemorrhoids are going to be these vascular tissues that are supported by what we call the trites muscle. And we can see in this image here, if we look back at that dentate line, Anything proximal or above the dentate line is internal hemorrhoids, and anything below or distal to the dentate line is external hemorrhoids. We won't get into the details here, but just to point out that there are both internal and external hemorrhoids. Now, it's estimated that up to three quarters of adults will suffer from hemorrhoidal disease at some point in their lives. So it's a very, very common condition, and it has the highest prevalence in Caucasians. And the prevalence of hemorrhoidal disease increases with increasing age, especially after the age of 45. Now, some of the signs and symptoms of hemorrhoidal disease include the following. Bright red blood per rectum. This is what we call BRBPR. So this is, again, going to be something that occurs generally after you've had a bowel movement and then after wiping with toilet paper, you may see some blood on the toilet paper or you may see some blood in the toilet, but it's often going to be at the end of the bowel movement. We can see some anal pain, although this is going to be less common than it would be with anal fissures. Anal pain can occur as a sort of ache that can occur afterwards, or it could be something that could occur with certain types of hemorrhoids, like external hemorrhoids that have a thrombosis or a clot in them that can 
cause extreme pain, but it's not going to be the same type of pain we see with anal fissures where we have pain during defecation. We can also have itching. We can have prolapse, so sometimes the hemorrhoids can pop out, so you can feel them. And sometimes after a bowel movement, you can feel a lump, so that can be hemorrhoids sort of bulging out. And then with regards to perianal skin tags, oftentimes this is going to be, again, due to long-term hemorrhoidal disease, or it could be a remnant of an external hemorrhoid. So if you've had an external hemorrhoid that has since settled down or resolved in its inflammation, you may have a little bit of excess skin or a bit of a skin tag that can develop as well. So this can also be something that can be found in hemorrhoidal disease. And the third disease condition that can cause perianal skin tags is Crohn's disease. So Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease or IBD that can affect any part of the gastrointestinal system. So this can include anywhere from the mouth to the perianal region may be affected. But we will note that the ileum, where the small intestine meets the large intestine, so in this area here, and the ascending colon, so the ascending colon is this area here, are going to be the most commonly affected. Now Crohn's disease is more prevalent in European and Ashkenazi Jew populations, and there is a higher risk of Crohn's disease in smokers, and this is in contrast to ulcerative colitis, another type of inflammatory bowel disease, in which smokers can have a reduction in their symptoms in ulcerative colitis. And we can also see in Crohn's disease two different age groups that have an onset of this condition, those below the age of 30 and those above the age of 60. Now the signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease include abdominal pain. Often it's going to be in the right lower quadrant. So if you look at the belly button, we're looking right directly on the patient. We break up the abdomen into four quadrants. Here's the right side of the patient. Here's the left side of the patient. So it would be the right lower quadrant. This would be the same place as where we talked about the ileum being most commonly affected. So most of the time we can have crampy abdominal pain, but we can see most of the time in the right lower quadrant. And what's very important with Crohn's disease is going to be frequent bouts of watery diarrhea. This is going to be in contrast to ulcerative colitis, where we often are going to have bloody diarrhea. Crohn's disease patients can have bloody diarrhea rarely, but it's mostly going to be watery diarrhea. Crohn's disease patients can also have fistulas, so this is going to be due to that inflammation in the gastrointestinal system. A fistula is going to be a connection between two epithelialized surfaces. We can also see oral ulcers, so like canker sores. This is actually very common in Crohn's disease patients. We can see this occurring in roughly 50% of patients. And then Again, we can see those perianal skin tags we've been talking about in this lesson. And although we don't have the numbers for how many patients with anal fissures or hemorrhoidal disease have perianal skin tags, we do know the numbers for those with Crohn's disease. And three quarters of patients with Crohn's disease do have perianal skin tags. So due to that inflammation, again, the inflammation can occur all throughout the gastrointestinal system, but any inflammation in the anal cavity can lead to externalized findings like perianal skin tags. And this is going to be the third condition that we talked about in this lesson that can cause perianal skin tags. Hopefully on this lesson helpful, please check out my lessons on anal fissures, hemorrhoidal disease, and Crohn's disease for more information on those particular conditions. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.